Hey, this is Jamie with Stonemaier Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanisms in Machikoro Legacy. We are currently playing a two-player campaign of this game, um, and uh, it is a legacy game, as you can tell. We're three games in, and I should say right up front that my three favorite mechanisms in, the, in this game, three little things, all come out after the first game. The first game is kind of a normal game of Machikoro, and then you have uh, the the new elements added in after that. So if you don't want to know any of that, don't watch the video. Uh, play game one and game two, and then come back and, and uh, watch this if you'd like. Uh, but they're pretty small things. Uh, but they make a big difference. So Machikoro is a, is a game kind of in the vein, vein of Settlers of Catan, where you are rolling dice and hopefully gaining some benefits from those dice, whether it's your turn or someone else's turn. Competitive game. Um, and there are three just little changes that happen rather quickly in Machi Koro Legacy that I really enjoyed. Uh, the first is one of the original elements of Machi Koro that some players didn't like is that there are red cards. I'm not sure if they're in the base game or some of the expansions, but there are red cards that uh, are take that cards, essentially. So if you roll a certain number and trigger one of your red cards, you get to maybe take some money from an opponent. And the legacy version of this game does something really, really clever, which is at the end of each game, you add uh, one new type of card to the deck and um, or to the to the display actually you add two but but one of them that you add is double-sided and on one side is a red card kind of a take that style version of this card and the other is a uh, not a take that it's, it's either a, a blue or a green card um, which aren't take that cards and so by giving you this this binary choice the game is saying, if you want this to be more of a take that game, you can choose that. You have that choice. If you don't want that, you also have that choice. And I really, really like that. It gives players, lets players define the experience that they are enjoying the most out of the game. I think that is really, really clever, um, especially from a legacy game. That's a great thing to do in a legacy game or a campaign game even. You could probably do that in a campaign game as well. Um, the second is it, you have this little map. There's nothing really spoiler. Well, actually, no, there's a minor spoiler on this map, but again, it's something that I mentioned will come out right, aw right away. I'll try to kind of block it here. Let's see, come at it from this side. There we go. Um, so actually, no, both of them do come out right away. So the thing is that you have these three cards. Uh, they're landmark cards that you're trying to build during the game by paying either $5, $15, or $25, depending on the position of the card. And in the legacy version of the game, every game, the card to the left, the leftmost landmark, is going to cycle out. You're going to remove that, and the other two cards will cycle over, will shift over. And uh, this does two really cool things that I really enjoyed. One is that these cards that were once really, really expensive, that you really couldn't really aim for until later on in the game, one of them is now really cheap. And so you can get it on maybe your first or second turn, you can get it very early in the game. And so it has this feeling of something that you feel like this thing that was super powerful but unattainable is now really easily attainable and you can get it early in the game. That, that feels good to me. And I like that they use legacy, a legacy mechanism to shift those cards out. The other thing is that the card that you shifted out becomes a permanent card type that you add to um, the, the core establishments in the game. And I thought that was really clever too. The last thing, the third mechanism is um, there are times in Machi Kuro where you have nothing to do on your turn. You don't want to spend money um, or you don't, have, you don't have enough money to spend. And right away in the campaign, they introduce a way, uh, something that you can do on your turn without spending any money. And it's basically just to draw a line over here on the mountain. You're creating a railroad. And I, I just like the addition of that. Um, this is very specific to Machi Kuro, but I like that they uh, identified a problem with the game. Um, or perceived problem at least, and solved it with the legacy version. That's one of the great things about legacy versions of existing games. Um, you can take little problems and solve them. So those are my three favorite mechanisms in Machi Koro Legacy. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If these reminded you of any mechanisms in another game that you really enjoyed, feel free to mention that. Or if you have a different favorite mechanism in Machi Koro Legacy, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that in the comments as well. Thanks.